Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and I am here today with lesson number 18 on how to have that great and fulfilling and successful and wonderful career in engineering. And what we're going to talk about today is, this is lesson number 18, and we're going to talk about resolving conflict. We're going to be talking about conflict in the organization. Okay, now let's think like, uh, let's think there's sort of three different angles on conflict in the organization, but what I'm going to tell you is going to be applicable no matter which one of these three is the case. Case number one is going to be you're a manager or you're responsible for two people that are in a conflict. And I'm not talking about a little thing like, you know, uh, A versus B and okay, a little thing like that. But I'm talking about something that's busting out of the organization, something that's starting to impact more than just those two people, something that's starting to be a division in the organization or in the company or making the organization look bad in the company, really starting to impact the bottom line. So I'm not talking about disagreements. I'm talking about conflict, okay? Uh, and, and there's kind of like three different angles on that conflict. One is you could be responsible for, uh, you might just be a working level engineer, but you might have some technicians that are reporting to you that, are, that you know, basically they support you. You're not their manager, but they support you. And this conflict that's developing between those guys, it's starting to impact your ability to get your work done. Another angle on conflict, you might actually be their manager. You be, might be managing two people that are having a conflict. Another angle is it might be coworkers, like I'm an engineer and over here are two engineers in my organization and they're starting to have a conflict and that conflict is starting to impact me. Another possibility would be you might be involved in a conflict. It's you and another guy and it's starting to turn personal, starting to turn where it's not just a disagreement. Remember in that last video I told you about dealing with difficult people, about making them right? Well, this is beyond just making the person right. It's getting, it's getting personal and it's starting to impact things. It's starting to impact your ability to get your job done. All right. This applies to that too. And, and also it's not just throwing it over there on that other guy. It's about you personally reflecting personally reflecting on what I'm saying and making sure that this isn't happening to you because you know the person that we lie to more than anybody else we lie to ourselves and you got to make sure that you really 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 carefully reflect on this conflict that you're in all right let me just create the scenario and this could be two technicians that are uh, supporting you. This could be two engineers that are reporting to you. You're a manager. This could be you having a problem with another guy, or this could be two other guys in the organization. Okay, this is the situation. You need new test equipment. Okay, you need new test equipment. And the choice is you're either going to order Hewlett-Packard test equipment or you're going to order Keithley test equipment. Everybody agrees what testing needs to be done. Everybody agrees on what the objectives of the organization are, what your responsibilities are, what your objectives are. Everybody agrees on what the goal is to get the stuff tested. Okay, everybody agrees on everything. There's spec sheets for both pieces of equipment, but somehow this issue of what test equipment to order has become personal and has become, you know, actually beyond a disagreement and has become a conflict in the organization that is causing a disruption to the effectiveness of the organization, the effectiveness of the company. How do you resolve it? Okay, this is what you have to understand. 99 times out of 100, it has nothing to do with the Keithley. It has nothing to do with the HP. It's something down deeper. And we're arguing up here at this level. That's where the argument is. But what's really happening is something down here at this level. And this guy recognizes and this guy recognizes they can't operate down here because they would look foolish and they would look petty.
petty if people really knew what they were thinking. So they can't tell you what's really going on down here. So they're arguing up here about, well, this uh, HP piece of equipment doesn't have the right uh, reverse, you know, uh, reverse flyback transistor or whatever. Okay, so you start arguing technically. Well, if it's technical, it'd take you five minutes to get to the bottom of it, and chances are either one of them would work. So what's really going on if it doesn't have anything to do with specifications and it doesn't have anything to do with HP and it doesn't have anything to do with Keithley? You know what it has to do with? I can almost promise you every time. You know what it has to do with? Insecurity. Okay. Engineers tend to be prideful and they tend to be insecure. And something about this decision is making one or both of these individuals feel insecure. Secondly, engineers tend to be socially awkward. Sometimes they have trouble telling you what is really eating at them, and so it's down here eating at them but they're socially awkward, so they can't really tell you what's eating at them. So they come back up here where their expertise and their comfort zone is, specifications, and they're fighting up here where really what's going on is down here. Okay, So one is there's going to be insecurity involved. There's going to be social awkwardness involved. Number three, somebody feels threatened. Okay, somebody feels threatened. It doesn't have to do with HP and Keithley. It has to do with someone being threatened. And then the fourth thing that it likely has to do with is it has to do with the issue of pride and ego. Because engineers tend to be prideful and ego-driven, and so likely this thing has to do with that. All right, so like, let me give you an example. Let's say that the fight is over the ordering the Keithley or ordering the HP. It has become personal. It's jumped out of just those two guys. It's starting to impact the whole organization. It's impacting effectiveness. How do you get to the bottom of it? What you have to do as a person who is trying to resolve this conflict is you've got to peel back the onion. You've got to peel back the onion and get down to what the core issue is. You know what the core issue might be? Person A has always programmed HP instruments. And the HP instruments are based on HP BASIC. And he has spent his career working in HP BASIC. And that's what he's comfortable in and that's what he knows how to do. Maybe he's not actually a formal engineer. Maybe he kind of came up through the ranks and he kind of taught himself how to do HP BASIC. And he doesn't know how to do, uh, how to program a Keithley. That Keithley operates on C++. Okay. And he doesn't know C++. And one time he tried to learn C++ and he couldn't learn it. But you see, he doesn't want to tell you that he's afraid for his job. You see, he is afraid for his job because he's afraid that if you order those Keithleys, that he's not going to be able to figure out how to use them and he's going to become irrelevant in the operation. He is insecure and he is threatened. Okay, if you can get down to that level, then you can start solving the problem. What could you say? Oh man, yeah, I mean, okay, if, if, if we got the Keithleys, what we would need to do is we would need to get you some training. Are you willing to learn a new language if we gave you some training and gave you willingness to do it? You mean you would send me to class to learn it? Well, yeah, you know, because if the right, I'm not saying the right answer is the Keithley, but if we went with the Keithley, we would need to invest a little bit in getting you up to speed on this new programming language. And you know, what the thing is, if you learn C++, you could not only be doing instrumentation, but the analysis that we're doing, we're already doing it in C++, and there might be an opportunity for you to move. All of a sudden, it's just like, man, wasn't that easy to solve? I didn't know. The problem is he knows HP BASIC and he's afraid of C++. There's a simple solution that everybody wins, but what do you have to do? you got to peel back the onion. has nothing to do with HP. has nothing to do with that test equipment. It has to do with insecurity and people being threatened. How about the other guy that's arguing for the Keithley? I mean, the guy that was arguing for HP, it's because he's insecure and it's because he feels threatened. How about the guy that's ordering, uh, 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 
trying to argue for the Keithley. Well, let's say he's been in the organization for a long time and he's always been the sort of decider. He's not a manager, but he's just an engineer that works in the organization. And it's always been kind of the thing that he did. When equipment was going to be ordered, it was he was the decider. It's part of his job. You know, it's part of what gives him purpose in life. It's part of his sense of uh, sense of self-worth is, you know, when it comes to test equipment, I'm the decider. Well, when somebody else comes along and starts wanting to be part of that decision, then he is threatened because that has always been an area that he has been able to make decisions in. So all of a sudden, he's arguing for the Keithley, not necessarily because he thinks the Keithley is best, but because he wants to just reinforce to everyone that he's the decider. And somebody said something else, so he's going to have to do the opposite so that he may maintains his position and his sense of value and his sense of self-worth as being the decider. Okay, so do you see what you got to do? You got to peel back the onion. And then what you got to do is you got to work with that guy to build up his confidence, talk about areas of authority that he has, talk about how important he is, talk about how you really depend on him to be the go-to guy, you know, building his self-confidence up. But what you can see is, you can see that the argument between the Keithley and the uh, HP had nothing to do with those two instruments. It had to do with these social issues that are underlying them. And, and usually the conflicts in engineering, they always get back to those four things. Insecurity, social awkwardness, someone feeling threatened, and someone's pride and ego. And you've got to peel things back and you've got you've to address things at this level. Because if you try to address them at this level, these things remain. And whether you get Keithley or HP, these things down here are still going on and they're just going to pop back up in another way. So as a person that's trying to re uh, resolve conflict, dealing with conflict, you've got to peel the onion back until you get to what the real issue is. And that issue that I just gave you, that is not a made up issue. Another one, it was like a always had used Python to program uh, to program instruments and then somebody comes along and wants to order LabVIEW and what they show is hey man with LabVIEW National Instruments LabVIEW if you hook that up to HP equipment you can just you know drag and drop these little blocks and something that would take two or three weeks to program in Python you can do in a few minutes using National Instruments okay now that guy that's doing Python programming all of a sudden he's going to feel threatened because you don't need a $95,000 a year Python guru if you have national instruments. He feels what? He feels threatened. And all of a sudden he is being irrational and he is just having this vitriol response to this suggestion that we get LabVIEW. Okay, how about the guy that's arguing for LabVIEW? Let's say he's a little lower on the technical savvy, and he's afraid of Python. He's afraid that if, if, if we really do Python, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to have a place in the organization. So these two people are having a conflict. That was another real example that I just gave you. But it didn't have anything to do with Python versus LabVIEW. It had to do with people feeling threatened, with people being insecure, with people worried about their job, with people being socially awkward and not being able to tell you what their real fear is. So as a manager or as a peacemaker or as one that wants to resolve things, peel back that onion until you get to that dirty, rotten little core and then you deal with it. And you know what you would be surprised? You would be amazed at how easy it is to deal with once you get to the core issue. Let's say the guy that's the Python expert say, hey man, if I mean, I'll tell you something, Steve, the reason that you are valuable to me is not because you're a good Python programmer. The reason that you're valuable to me is you really understand testing and what we need in testing. And if you weren't so busy writing Python all the time, you might have the time to start overseeing more people's work. Because if we have four or five people working on LabVIEW, we're going to need somebody there to oversee it that really understands 
really understands the test and measurement world. And we're going to need someone that when, when things get really hard and the job can't be done with lab view, we got a person that can roll his sleeves up and get the job done in Python. You see, all of a sudden, the guy's like, wow, lab view is not a threat to me. Lab view is an opportunity to me. Or how about the guy that's, that's being irrational about lab view? could be that he's just afraid. He's afraid of Python. He's afraid that if, if we don't have lab view, I cannot contribute to the organizations. Well, how about, hey man, you know, we really need some, we need some more Python programmers, whether we get lab view or not. Would you be willing, like if we had a class like twice a week, a night class or something, we'll pay for the class or, you know, something for you to get up to speed in Python, would you be willing to try to learn Python? All of a sudden, he sees the opportunity for career growth because he might not just be stuck in that test lab from now on. If he could really program Python, he knows all of these places in the company that are looking for Python programmers. So he has an opportunity for career growth. You see, there's usually opportunities for win-wins. And the thing for you to understand is, is that what they are saying, what they are arguing, what is coming out of their mouth is not what is going on in their head. It is not what is in their heart. And you have to get down to that level. And when you get there, almost always, it's a very easy fix. Okay, you guys, let me know. Have you ever seen this before? Am I just talking crazy here? Or does this make sense? Has anybody else sort of seen what I'm talking about? Does it resonate? And the other thing, you know, I've told you about solving things with other people. But if you are involved in conflict, you need to reflect. You need to think, is the issue really with me HP or is the issue really with me insecurity? Am I being insecure? Is it an issue of pride with me? Is it an issue that I feel threatened? You need to self-reflect because you need to just like not lie to yourself and you need to be able to come out of this. And a lot of times if you would just go to your manager and be honest with them, hey man, I feel threatened by Keithley because I don't think that I can program those things. You know what? He might give you a solution. Okay, hope that this stuff makes sense. If you like it, think about giving us a thumbs up. Put your comments down below, man. I want to hear back. I want to hear what you think. I want to hear if other people have seen the things that I've seen. Okay, this is Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com. We will talk to you guys later.